Well, it's the middle of the night. I'm off work, so it's time to work on the robot. Everyone always likes, oh, all I do all day is work on robots. Most of them are not my battle bot. There's a thing, there's a thing, and it has huge eyes. I think this is it. It's a secret weapon from huge. Let's get it inside and see what it is. So I've spent the last couple weeks working on different fork designs. And I've been playing with different forks, driving around different forks, trying to get better at this. Because I feel like this is where I always screw up at BattleBots. And I do need to get better at this if I expect to start beating vertical robots. So <clears throat> I made a bunch of different mini fork robots and I've been driving them against each other. And here's what I've discovered so far. So something I really like about this design, I've only put like about 15 degrees, maybe 30 degrees of freedom to this. Because what you really don't want is when you hit something hard and you get hung up, you don't want it to be able to swing underneath your robot and hold it up. So I did specifically try to make it that it just barely would lift the front wheel. Ideally, you don't even want it to lift at all. But if you do not do lose the lifting battle, I like this to be able to lift a little bit to give you a chance to back up, to hopefully get your forks back down and reset. I still... I'm trying to debate, like, how much is the right movement. If you guys have any recommendations, please leave it in the comments. Because I, I have tried slightly different movement patterns on all of them. Like, this one has, I think, a little more swing up. This one, not so much. Yeah. Actually, I guess I could just leave. Yeah, so they all kind of come to a different point. The game of who gets under who deadlock. Something that was really interesting that Endgame told me was people always think his forks are allowed him to get under his opponent, but it's actually to help keep his opponent away. Something I've never had trouble with, but I, uh, Donald Hudson was telling me what a struggle it is for him, is weapon spin up. Um, Scorpio's usually you know, has his weapon hanging in the back where the hammer is, and I have all the time in the world to spin that thing up. But apparently a lot of verts, um, when their opponents are just in their face constantly, they don't have a chance to get their weapon going. So when Endgame was telling me, like, yeah, when people are stuck out here on the forks, it gives me time to spin up, I never realized that was an advantage he was getting from that. But just kind of sitting here of this terrible game... Ah, I just don't like the fork meta, because I don't like it. I feel like I'm never taking advantage of it. Ah, you are big and heavy. Why am I not surprised something that came from huge is huge? But more importantly, what is in the package? So, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, I did contact Jonathan, and I said I wanted something from him, and I wanted it from him, and nobody else, because I wanted his Tegris. And there was something about huge Tegris. When I saw the Tegris wheels on huge, they actually stayed together, and the Starchild wheels fell apart. And Jonathan was telling me... It was partially a construction method, but also the supplier he gets it from. And so I asked, I asked Jonathan very nicely if I could buy some of his leftover Tegris um, from the good supplier. Yeah. It's hard to do this one-handed while recording. Yeah. Huge. I'm sure... All the Boy Scouts out there are like, Zach, you're doing it wrong. I'm sure I am. But I am at least cutting away from myself. So I got that going for me. And here it is. Basically, 
a giant, two giant sheets of Tegris, which this is essentially BattleBot sized carbon fiber. And this is one of the ways we're gonna shave weight out of this boy. It's with this giant, <laughs> giant sheet of high quality Tegris. Thank you, Jonathan. So I talked to him a lot. He's kind of been the material scientist of the BattleBot world because I don't remember that many people using UHMW and then he came out with his crazy wheels and now like every single robot has UHMW in it. I don't think he was like the original, but he definitely made it popular. And now he has started using this crazy Tegra stuff for wheels that can hold up to horizontals. And I noticed a lot of robots starting to use this now. So I'm trying to jump on this bandwagon since I need to shave a little weight. And I originally intended just to make the arm, the straight up arm piece, which is right out of Tegris. But Jonathan told me that's actually a bad idea. Because apparently when you drill holes in this, it loses its integrity pretty quickly. And so if I was to do like that tight hole pattern and then put the bushing in there, chances are it wouldn't hold up very well. He says it works best when you cut a solid shape out of it. And he'd recommend putting it inside of something. So if I made like a titanium shell and then put the Tegris inside of that to help, um, to help support the titanium, that would be my best bet. But I want to do that. I also want to use this for internal rail members. And uh, anything left over, we might be making weird, crazy stuff with it. So, to Jonathan, a very big thank you. And uh, let's go see what we can make this look like. Yeah, you have to take pictures. <laughs> Come on. Okay, Diane and Buddy. Someone. One more. One more. I'll do it. I'll do it. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I I've already done it with the ears sticking out. <laughs>